Hi, Jordan Ficklin here with Professional Watches. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Seiko SRP D77. The SRP D77 has a stainless steel case with a hard coating, hardlex crystal, green textured dial, exhibition back, and a NATO strap. Now if you haven't seen my other reviews, I'm a watchmaker. And so I review the technical aspects of watches. I'm not going to give all the specs. I'm not going to talk too much about fit and finish. We're going to talk about technical aspects of the watch and its movement, what makes it run, what makes it unique, and those kind of things. I want to thank Seiko for sending out this watch. Um, green happens to be my favorite color. And this is the first time I've had a green watch that I could wear with any kind of regularity. Now, there isn't anything technically new or exciting about this particular watch. And so I'm going to take this opportunity to discuss what makes Seiko watches so loved, um, what makes them different, um, some of the technical aspects that are common to pretty much all um, Seiko automatic watches. So first of all, Seiko watches just work. They're tanks, they're well built, they're durable, dependable, and they've chosen simple ways of accomplishing uh, watchmaking problems. Um, to help make them that uh, durable and reliable watches that uh, people truly love for that reason. This watch has inside the Seiko 4R36. Now this caliber is pretty much identical to the NH36, um, which is the SII branded instead of Seiko branded version of that watch that you'll find in a lot of micro brands. Um, similar to the 7S26, but it's got some definite upgrades from that version. It is 21,600 beats per hour. It has a hacking seconds. It can be manually wound. Um, and of course it has their magic winding system for automatic watches. Now, the improvements over say the 7S26 include that manual winding. Can't manually wind the 7S26. The hacking seconds, also not a part of the 7S26, but is a part of the 4R36 and NH36 family of movements. Now there's another big difference between the 7S series and the 4R or NH series, and that is the balance amplitude. Now amplitude is the distance that the balance wheel rotates before it comes to a stop and returns back to the center point or dead point of the balance wheel before it goes the other way and back. Um, generally speaking, more amplitude means a better consistent, uh, better running watch. Um, but the earlier Seiko movements like the 7S um, and the 7000 series and some of the older series are notorious for having uh, low amplitude when compared to their Swiss counterparts. This is, means that one, they're not usually quite as good at timekeepers, but with that lower amplitude, there is less force coming from the mainspring and they don't wear out their components as quickly. It seems that in the earlier versions of the watches, um, they had durability in mind. Think of an old Timex movement that takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Um, as a watchmaker, I've seen a lot of these older Seiko movements that have been out for 20 or 25 years and haven't experienced any problems there coming in for service. That's in part because of that low amplitude, um, which allows them to just keep running without experiencing any wear or any significant wear in the components. Now with the newer NH36 and 4R um, calibers like the one in this watch, um, Seiko has a higher amplitude, more what we would see in Swiss watches, more of a 280, 290, 300 degrees of amplitude, whereas in that 7S it's not uncommon to have 250, 260 degrees of amplitude maximum. Um, I think that's in part uh, to deliver a little better timekeeping. But I think also it goes hand in hand with the manual winding um, aspect of these watches and the hacking. I think they have decided that they want to address the needs of the modern collector, especially with that being able to manually wind the watch. Um, having an automatic watch that you can't wind manually is all well and good if this is a watch that is your one watch and you wear it every day. When you wear it, it winds up and you don't have to worry about ever winding it. But if you are excited about watches and you're a collector and you have multiple watches and you wear them for a day and you put them aside for several days, um, it's very convenient to be able to wind that watch and put it on. And 
And Seiko recognizes now that a lot of people have mini watches. And this is a way to uh, meet the needs of that community um, and allow you to have multiple watches and not worry about shaking it for a while to try and get it running or whatever when you first put the watch on. Now what all of these automatic Seiko movements have in common is Seiko's magic lever winding system. This system um, is different from most Swiss watches that have some kind of a reversing mechanism. However, there is one notable Swiss brand that has a very similar system, and that is IWC's Peloton winding system operates on a very similar principle to the magic lever system that Seiko uses. Now, in the magic lever system, as the oscillating weight goes around, um, it has two pawls that either push or pull on a ratcheting wheel for winding. So it winds in both directions, and it's really very efficient. Um, it captures very small motion of the weight um, and stores that energy. And when it switches motion from one direction to the other, it has a small dead angle. This is the distance of travel where it's not capturing the motion and storing it in the mainspring. Um, on this caliber, uh, the 4R36, the dead angle is, varies depending on where it is on the position of the, of the cam. Because the way the system works is there is a, a cam that's essentially triangular, but it's kind of rounded um, in the center. And it has a, a follower that rides on that cam. And as that rotates, that pushes this lever in and out. And as that goes in and out, um, it, the paws go and pull or push on the ratcheting wheel. Um, depending on where it is on that, the motion is exaggerated or not, and you get faster movement. So at its best, it's about 38 degrees of a dead angle, switch from one to the other. And it can be much higher than that in other places. But on average, um, that dead angle is about the same as you would find in an ETA 2892 or similar probably to the Rolex 4130, which has a published 47 degree dead angle, which is an improvement over the 4030 automatic movement from Rolex, which has a dead angle of 93 degrees. One of the things that makes the magic lever system so great is that it has very few components. Less than half the components that would be found in a Swiss winding system with reversing wheels. And they're much simpler components to both make and service. Um, you know, there are only about four distinct components in the magic lever system. You have the cam on the weight, you have the pawl, the gathering wheel, and then a reduction wheel to the automatic winding system. Very efficient in gathering that energy and, and winding the watch, and very simple. If there were any downsides to this watch, they wouldn't be related to the actual technical aspects um, of the watch. Um, I would say one, it's not uncommon for them to be delivered from the factory not terribly well regulated. Um, to be off by 20 seconds is, is unfortunately not terribly uncommon, but it's a quick, easy adjustment by the watchmaker. They can be made to run quite precisely. And the other thing would be the notorious um, chapter ring, which can be off its alignment from the dial. And that's because there is just a little bit of wiggle. They, they design that so when that chapter ring drops in, um, the alignment hole is much bigger than the peg that aligns it, and so it can shift to one side or the other. And so it's kind of the luck or the draw whether you get one that lines up well or not. I've seen them off by quite a bit. Um, this one was off by a little bit, um, but I was able to just from the movement side, drop the movement out and move it and greatly improve that um, on it so that it doesn't bug me when I look down at the watch. All in all, Seikos are, you probably already know this, reliable, great, um, inexpensive watches that just work well. And that's why people love them. It's because for a few hundred bucks, you can get into a watch that just works well and looks fantastic. Thanks for uh, watching the video today and for tuning in to Professional Watches. I encourage you to check out some of our other uh, videos and reviews. Um, and I hope to be back again soon um, with another review for Professional Watches. Thank you.